What we want to look at here is the blurring and sharpening tools of Photoshop. There are a number of different ones in different places, often in your scanning software. You have those as options as well. And um, we have, first we have the blurring tools. Um, this is, uh, realize the little submenu has gone off the side of your um, picture frame there. We've got um, a number of them and down towards the bottom there's the um, smart blur and uh, that's a fairly new tool which is a, um, a terrific one. Remember that blurring is what it is. It is not going to necessarily make things better. Um, so you need to be very careful about how much and how you use blurring and sharpening tools. Um, we'll bring up this called the smart blur and uh, this is a, a pretty good uh, uh, new tool and once again what will happen is um, you've got the radius and you've got the threshold and you really just need to play with it um, and uh, the general rule that I want to pass on uh, with all of these kinds of tools is a little bit goes a long way so don't overdo it because it'll obviously look like it's not natural or real. And so um, just be very careful what you do there. Um, you've got, again, uh, down here, you've got quality, low, medium, and high. And you've got what they talk about, uh, a couple of different characteristics here. So this is one that can be um, pretty useful. Um, whenever you get the preview for all of these tools, you have a little plus sign and a minus sign here. So you can zoom in and see just exactly what it is that you're doing and um, get, get a, a handle on the effect. So the smart blur um, is one that you can utilize. Another one for fixing photographs and is really blurring tools is the um, uh, under noise. Again, you got to slide over, but we have D speckle and we have dust and scratches. D speckle and dust and scratches. And both of these can be used to clean up, but once again, what they are in effect is um, blurring tools. And so you um, have to be careful how much you use them. In particular, um, the uh, pull up the dust and scratches. And you can see very quickly when you click the preview, look at this image here, um, you can see um, how much and how quickly it can really distort your, your image. Look at that, dramatically. So you need to be really careful how much one or two pixels um, you, you use. Um, it may start to clean up the background, but it clearly um, blurs the image um, uh, itself. And uh, then again, we have the threshold. The threshold seems to almost bring back um, the, the detail and the... Um, the the scratches and and things. So again, you need to be careful of what you do here. It may very well be that for something like this, you'd be better off um, using a selection, making a selection, uh, especially on the background. And either we're going to be talking about in the next video, the cloning tools and actually cloning this area. Or if you're going to use um, the the scratches, dust and scratches, you select the area so that the change is isolated to the background and not, uh, in this case, to the, the guy on the screen. So that when I do this, oh, well, um, here, yes, it's going to start to fix the background, but we haven't blurred or lost anything in the photo area itself. So um, that might be a much better uh, way to go um, in terms of, of uh, trying to fix this thing up. 
we also have the um, sharpening tools and the sharpening tools um, do just as they say they sharpen but they what they really do is exaggerate the edges of the pixels um, uh, the different colors of pixels that and so it appears to make it crisper and sharper um, with uh, sharpening you need to be very careful there's a tendency to overdo it and once again we have several different sharpening tools down uh, near the bottom here we've got smart sharpen which is a new tool and it seems to be um, a pretty sophisticated tool because we can for instance go to this advanced button here and we can apply sharpening to the shadows or uh, to the highlight areas and so we can actually um, get more focused on just what it is that we do um, as well as the um, again the basic sharpening tool and so um, you want to be careful uh, once again because when you get too much sharpening going on I'm going to really ramp it up and you see literally how it it really exaggerates and almost puts a glow around the edges of things and so clearly it does not look realistic and so you want to be very careful how much um, of this kind of business that you in fact apply um, when you're working uh, with with an image so um, I would be careful to um, not get too much going on there then um, uh, another tool back up to the same area sharpen um, the one that traditionally has always been talked about as the tool to use is the unsharp mask um, just the name of that sounds counterintuitive but the unsharp mask is always um, from what I, I've heard from other folks and books that I've read is the tool to use this new one that we just looked at may um, also be useful but compared to the others that have been around for a while the unsharp mask is the one to use and once again you don't want to go nuts with this and overdo it um, because that's where you run into trouble again look I start to get that that very weird kind of look even if I don't do it that much you can see um, sort of what you get on a copier when you try to um, contrast an image too much it almost has a glow around it <clears throat> I once went to a sh um, workshop where the fella said uh, with the unsharp mask um, if I could give you any general guide he said remember 150 150 that represents um, don't go more than a hundred percent on the amount and don't go more than five on the radius and leave the threshold at zero and um, so a hundred five zero one fifty in other words he said that might be um, a kind of a, a marker that you might find helpful and um, I find that generally I don't go over much over a hundred percent because it just does too much um, distortion if, if if you want to call it to the image and uh, so um, also it's often recommended that if um, an image needs to be sharpened a, a bunch sharpen it a little bit and then resharpen it rather than doing it in one big chunk um, you'll get a little bit more of a natural look by doing it um, in a couple of steps in smaller quantities um, so there's another thing to keep in mind and um, the last point I want to make is with any of the filters anytime you use a filter um, any one of these um, that filter and the setting for it that you use will automatically be right here at the top of the filters pull down menu um, dust and scratches so this is a way to reapply a filter to another image or to the same image in the exact same amount so you will always 
have whatever the last filter you just used and its settings here at the top and you can just the short command on the Mac is command F on a PC that would be control F and you can reapply that exact same filter without having to go back to the uh, dialog box so that's a, a pretty nifty um, little shortcut that you may find helpful and um, there you have it